The ocean is full of monsters. Millions of odd, terrifying, extraordinary creatures lurking, thriving in the deep. But none are quite as legendary as the giant squid. The inspiration for mythical sea beasts and daring adventures. We'll be fighting at close quarters with the most tenacious of all sea beasts. It's hard to believe that such a creature is really out there, under our boats, beyond our shores. But it is real, and it is really giant. The longest total length ever recorded is 43 feet. But some scientists believe that they can grow up to 66 feet. That's like one and a half school buses. This has to be the largest squid in the world, right? Well, what if I told you there was something even bigger? Most people think the giant squid is actually the largest squid in the ocean, but it's not. The colossal squid is. I wouldn't blame you if you didn't know this. The colossal squid is still very much a mystery, even to the experts. A huge hurdle to this understanding is the fact that we have never been able to observe the colossal squid alive in its natural habitat. And the only real way for scientists to be able to observe this creature in its natural habitat is to capture it on film. And that kind of challenge is exactly why OceanX exists. Okay, before we get too ahead of ourselves, what do we already know about the colossal squid? Well, we first need to know, what even is a squid? We've all seen one before, right? But what really makes a squid a squid? Squid, like octopuses, belong to the class cephalopod, soft-bodied invertebrates that have a prominent head and a number of arms and tentacles. They have donut-shaped brains that wrap around their esophagus. This makes them more effective at processing information from their often prominent eyes, but forces them to take small bites or else risk brain damage. Most squid have a head, a long triangular mantle, two wing-like fins, two eyes, a beak, and 10 limbs, eight arms, and two longer tentacles. Most squids also have a gladius, or pen, a durable yet flexible internal shell inside their bodies, protecting their visceral organs. This anatomy can be found in small squid like the short fin squid, as well as even the largest, the colossal squid. Of course, there will always be species that don't quite fit in this box like the rare Dana octopus squid. We encountered this amazing species during our mission in the Seychelles. Yes, it really is a squid, but unlike most squid, adult Dana octopus squid only have eight appendages. And unlike most squid, the bobtail squid, also adorably called the dumpling squid, does not have a gladius. There is such a diverse range of squid species out there that if you ask what all squid have in common, the answer would be, well, not much. Even squid that have all the typical anatomy look anything but typical. Like the big fin squid, the world's deepest dwelling squid. These squid can exceed six meters or almost 20 feet, though most of their length is due to their extremely long arms and tentacles. Or like this beast of a purple back flying squid we discovered residing near a shipwreck in the Red Sea. Now, you gotta wonder, is the giant squid just a giant version of a normal squid and the colossal squid an even bigger version of that? Well, because giant squid live in waters all over the world, it was once thought that there were several species all categorized under the giant squid umbrella. But after recent genetic testing, research has indicated that there may be only one species. The same could be assumed for the colossal squid. So no, the giant squid is not just a big version of small squid. And the colossal squid is not just a bigger version of a giant squid. They're completely different species. The colossal squid has a much larger and heavier body, reaching a weight of around 1,100 pounds. Compared to the giant squid, which weighs up to 600 pounds, that's nearly double. The colossal squid, though heavier, has shorter legs and tentacles, leading scientists to believe they grow to around 32 feet in total length, as opposed to the giant squid's 43. Even though it may not be the longest, the colossal squid is still considered the largest squid in the ocean because by basically every other metric, it is. So how do we even know this much if we've hardly seen any giant, much less colossal squids alive? Well, first, there have been quite a few cases of deceased squid washing ashore or mistakenly captured in fishing nets, which scientists have then preserved and studied. Like in 1873, when the first known photograph of a near complete specimen of a giant squid was taken after it was unfortunately caught in a herring net off of Newfoundland. But it wasn't until 2007 when a fishing vessel in the Southern Ocean accidentally pulled up a thousand pound colossal squid. It was technically still alive, but basically on death's door. Luckily, the fishermen thought, hey, this might matter to science, and now it lives in a museum in New Zealand for all to see. 
These are great specimens to study, but as our dear misunderstood friend the blobfish has shown us, things can look a little different when you take a literal fish out of literal water. Proportions may shift, tentacles can be stretched longer than they naturally would be, certain data can become skewed when you only study an animal in a lab outside of the proper pressure and light conditions. But studying these giants in the wild is no easy task. In the hundreds of years that we've known about them, we've only been able to film them twice. The first time was on our first ship, Alusha, south of Japan, and then the second time by a team of researchers in the Gulf of Mexico. For a creature that's been in the zeitgeist for literally hundreds of years, we still don't know very much about them. So why is it so hard? Well, when it comes to the deep sea, nothing is simple. Both the giant and colossal squid live in the twilight zone. The twilight zone is the layer of water that lies around 220 to 1,000 meters, that's 650 to 3,300 feet, below the ocean's surface, past the point any sunlight can reach, further than any human can safely dive without specialized tools due to crushing pressure. So in this vast, pitch black environment that requires high-tech equipment like submersibles and remotely operated vehicles to properly traverse, it's no wonder these creatures are so good at evading us. When planning the filming of these creatures, the most notable difference between giant and colossal squid is that while the giant squid can be found around the world, the colossal squid only lives in the Southern Ocean, near the brutal conditions surrounding Antarctica. This is Dr. Nathan Robinson, a marine biologist, science communicator, and longtime collaborator with us at OceanX. One of my favorite things he's done is turtle cam. In fact, we've added a couple hours of turtle cam to our lo-fi underwater stream. You should definitely check that out. Anyway, Nathan was part of that mission in 2019 that filmed a live giant squid in the Gulf of Mexico. We asked how he believes we can finally find and film the colossal squid. He gave us four key components to this plan. Travel, maps, whales, and light. The first step will be to go to where the squid are. So we need to head to the Southern Ocean. Where we're heading are some of the most tumultuous, difficult to navigate waters in the world. Some of the storms and the waves you get down there are impossible for our other vessels. Great, we already have a means of travel, the Ocean Explorer, the most advanced exploration, research, and media vessel out there. And it's already traveled across the world facilitating important, inspiring missions. But what do we do once we're down in the Southern Ocean? That's where the maps come in. We know from the giant squid that they tend to hang out in deep, canyons, so these valleys where it goes from shallow waters very quickly into deep waters. So there's a device called the EK-80 on the Ocean Explorer that helps us to map the bathymetry. That's the layout of the seafloor. So that's how we can start to figure out where these big deep water canyons are. Mapping the seafloor is crucial to all of this. Areas where we have lots of fish in the water and the surface, and then the deep canyons below us, that's probably going to be the perfect conditions to find a colossal squid. The next piece to this exploration puzzle is whales, but not just any whales, sperm whales. Sperm whales are one of the biggest predators of giant squid and colossal squid. We often see the scars on sperm whales of giant squid and colossal squid attacks. We've even seen some sperm whales surface with giant squid tentacles still attached to them, the teeth on their suction cups still embedded in their flesh. Scientists have been able to estimate giant and colossal squid size and population just based on the beaks found in sperm whales' digestive tracts. If we know where they're hunting and where they're looking, that can provide us some crucial information as to where these animals are to be found. But the first point is we need to find the sperm whales. Well, luckily, on the Ocean Explorer, we have a fantastic hydrophone setup as well that we can use to listen for the clicks, the sounds that sperm whales make. So by following these sounds, we can follow the sperm whales to where they hunt. And once we've figured out that location, that's when we use light. What we found with the giant squid is what they seem to be most attracted to is lights. To attract the squid, we need to use a glowing lure, or e-jelly, which was invented by Dr. Edith Witter, the scientist behind both missions that successfully captured footage of the giant squid. At the depths both the giant and colossal squid live, there's no sunlight. So almost every living creature in that zone creates its own light, including a species of jellyfish that when attacked, creates a pinwheel pattern meant to attract larger predators to scare away their attackers. The e-jelly mimics that pinwheel pattern. I wanted to be unobtrusive. I had been trying to figure out ways to do it with red light that would be invisible, hopefully, to these deep sea animals that see primarily only blue light. And then we would use this optical lure to bring the squid to us. 
and it works. As you can see here, the E-Jelly successfully attracted the Humboldt squid on an Ocean X mission in Chile, and it was used to get the footage of the giant squid in the Gulf of Mexico. Once you've got the costa squid in, feeding on the bait you provided or attacking, the key is getting as many cameras in the water as possible. And boy, do we have cameras. So we know the what and we know the how. But why? Why should we go through all this trouble just to catch them on film? Well, we aren't just getting the shot and calling it a day. Filming the colossal squid is just the first step in more research and more understanding. Once we figure out how to observe them alive in their natural habitat, we can figure out how to tag them. This is essential to figuring out how they live and how they interact with the world around them. Are they active predators or are they ambush predators? If they're active predators, are they cruising around non-stop trying to find food? Or B, are they just sitting there floating, doing absolutely nothing, waiting for that one moment where food comes by and then bam. These are the kinds of things we need to know in order to better share the planet with them. I think Dr. Nathan Robinson says it best. They're in myths and legends for millennia, but we know almost nothing about them. We don't know if they're threatened. We don't know if they're thriving. We don't know if in a hundred years time, they might not exist anymore. We might have pushed them into extinction. Opening that first door to understanding where they are and how we can study them can start to provide us information to determine whether we need to protect them. And we think we should protect them because these aren't monsters. These are important, interesting, awe-inspiring animals that should be protected. And it's our mission at Ocean X to help do that.